Hi there, this is John with WesleyGospel.com. Today I want to talk about the gift of the discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits. And uh, um, it's it really only applies to prophetic people, people who are prophetically inclined, dream interpretation inclined. Um, and... When I, if you're not, if you don't know what that is, um, that's something that anybody can attain or get. You know, it says in First Corinthians fourteen one to eagerly desire it, to pray for it. So, um, but uh, some people have a hunger for that more than others. And um, before I I get into this, I would like to. I would like to retract one of the things that I said in a previous podcast called uh, What's the Spirit of Offense? I kind of downplayed the deliverance ministry, some of the ideas that are in the deliverance ministry, um, where there's a demon behind every uh, tree, underneath every rock, inside every bush. This idea where you can take John Eckhart's books, right, and come up with like 300 demon names. And um, I, I think that it's good to maintain a healthy skepticism towards that sort of thing. Like Jen, John Eckhart's book, The Demon Hit List, which has, which has like 500 demon names in it. Um, I think it's good to have a healthy skepticism about just how many demon names there actually are. Um, in terms of like actual demon names versus made up demon names. Okay. Um, but I do want to say that the gift of discerning of spirits is a real gift. It's mentioned in second Corinthians 12, 10 in the context of prophetic gifts, which are usually going to be dreams in some way, shape or form, different kinds of dreams. I personally believe <clears throat> that most of the gifts mentioned in, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, etc., etc., are mainly dreams. That's just me. Um, and it's a reference to different kinds of dreams. I, I do believe that. Um, because when you look at the whole biblical panoply from Genesis to Revelation, dreams are the primary way that God speaks to prophets. First, uh, Numbers 12, 6 to 8. And um, it's while it is true that our five spiritual senses can pick up on other spiritual experiences like voices and sensations and stuff like that, the dreams are always the clearest ones to where they can, you know, really have revelation in them. I mean, really clear revelation. Not saying that we don't have other types of spiritual impressions and things like that, but it seems to me that when I look at the writings of the Old Testament prophets, like the Old Testament books, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, it's based on dreams that are turned into prophetic poems, it seems, and usually nightmarish ones um, that are holy. Holy nightmares turned into poems. Um, ooh, man, I felt something there when I said that. I'm going to say that again. I believe that when the Old Testament prophets were writing their books, they were writing down holy nightmares that they turned into poems. Thank you, Lord. There was something to that one. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Um, lost my train of thought there for a moment, but that's okay. The gift of discerning of spirits comes out of this area, comes out of dream interpretation. And, um, and, but of course, there's closed visions as well, right? And, um, which is, there's something kind of eerily coincidental that happened. Um, and, uh, I did this podcast a couple of days ago on what's the spirit of offense, and I kind of questioned the concept of, you know, people call offense a demon. And I was like, well, where's that in the Bible, right? 
people can have trouble with unforgiveness, bitterness, and grudges, but where's the demon of offense in the Bible? Come on, show me. Book, chapter, verse. Where is it? And I started going down this track where I was like, you know, John Eckhart's demon hit list. Uh, you know, I, I question whether... I question whether 75% of the demon names in there actually exist, you know. You know, and then, and then I said, <clears throat> Hosea says that there's a spirit of fornication, so I believe in the existence of that one. That appeared to St. Anthony in the life of Anthony. Then there's the spirit of infirmity, which is in the Gospels. Um, then there's the spirit of fear, which is in Timothy. Um, I recently realized that there's also the spirit of the Antichrist, which is in the Johannine epistles. Um, but then you got Jezebel, and then you got Leviathan, and these are kind of looser interpretations um, where we look at a false prophetess in the book of Revelation, and we look at a water dinosaur in the book of Job, and we call those demons too, where I think that's a bit of a stretch, honestly. Now, uh, with that being said, that doesn't stop the dreams and visions from happening, and that doesn't stop the gift of discerning of spirits from operating the way that it wants to operate. Um, and that is that the gift of discerning of spirits is going to operate in an unpredictable way. And again, it's still going to operate through dreams and visions, uh, mainly that, but also through feelings and sometimes even supernatural smells that, that people can have, and in voices, of course. But uh, I, I always like to try to drill into the dream realm, because that's where the most clarity is going to come from. The clear visions are going to come from that. It, I really try to center the prophetic into the dream area, because uh, there seems to be where the most clarity, clear revelation comes from. Not only in the Bible, but in my own personal experience and in church history, it seems to be that way. When you look at the Journal of John Wesley or, or, or the um, certain accounts of the Methodists and the Covenanters, it's always coming out of something that somebody said, I saw something. I saw some sort of visual form of revelation, and then, and then something happened afterwards. So... Um, we can talk about impressions, we can talk about hearing voices, and we can talk about smell and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's always the stuff that people see visually that ends up getting written down in some church history writing or something. It's always the visual stuff that lasts the test of time. It's the stuff that really has clear vision in it. And I hate to use a New Age word, but clairvoyance, clear vision. Right. So, um, but it helps to understand what true biblical prophecy looks like. There's, there's visuals involved. When, we, when they invented television back, I think it was the 40s, if I'm not mistaken, when television was invented, the whole the phrase, the word television, uh, was based off of this idea of visions. People know what visions were. Yeah, you see a ghostly video clip appear in the air that you can kind of see through. Um, and it was called a vision. And when they came up with electronic television sets, they thought, why don't we call it a vision? Something vision, vision. It's a lot like a vision, but it's electronic. Why don't we call it a television? Let's call it a television a telecommunication television yeah let's call it a television like a telephone and a vision it's a it's like a tele yeah what's called a television right so if a person sees a, a a a vision with their eyes open well it's like looking at a television although it's see-through like a ghost but uh i wish i could have more of those um, I've only had one. It was Martin Luther's head, disembodied head, floating in the air one time. <coughs> Strange story. Um, so, uh, I really believe that the discerning of spirits... Okay, I'm really wandering. Sorry. Um, I had to go into the spectrum of spiritual experiences for a while there to help understand where discerning of spirits is going to come out of. So, discerning of spirits... 
um, is the revelation of demonic presences, specific demonic presences. That is historically in Catholic theology uh, the understanding, and I believe the Methodists understood it that way as well, that the gift of discerning of spirits is primarily a visionary gift that helps you to identify the presence of a specific evil spirit. It's a specific evil spirit. And why? Why, you may ask? It is for the purpose of casting out demons, all right? which is prayer. It's prayer ministry. So in order to cast out a demon successfully, you have to have a discerning of spirits experience come before. Otherwise, you're just doing guesswork. And nobody likes a guesswork deliverance minister. Uh, here, fill out this questionnaire. We'll see which kind of a spirit you have. No. Uh, no. Uh, so that's what the gift of discerning of spirits is for. And recently, I had a dream of Father Gabriel Amort, and I was talking to him casually, and I feel like the Lord wants me to point to his books and to his life and ministry. He was the chief exorcist in the Catholic Church. Um, Vid Angel has an edited version of the Pope's Exorcist, which came out last year. I think it's pretty good, but uh, never want to watch it without Vid Angel. Uh, they very, there's a lot of filth in it because of Hollywood. Uh, get Vid Angel to take the sex and cussing out, but it's a really good movie otherwise. And um, The Pope's Exorcist, he was the top exorcist in the Catholic Church based out of Rome. And uh, he put out uh, a book called An Exorcist Tells His Story. He had another book called An Exorcist, More Stories, both of them published by Ignatius Press. And then he had a whole bunch of other books that were either by him or about him. Um, An Exorcist dis Explains the Demonic, The Devil is Afraid of Me, Father Amort, My Battle Against Satan, and Father Gabriel Amort, The Official Biography. Uh, there was also a documentary with him called The Devil and Father Amort, which I saw. Really, so, I mean, if you really want to understand the gift of discerning of spirits, Father Amort's the best guy to learn it from. And if you're into deliverance ministry, learn from Father Amort. If you already know a thing or two about deliverance ministry, it can't hurt to learn from Father Gabriel Amort. Uh, and I, in the dream, I remember... I, I, I said something to somebody. Oh, yeah, there was an evil spirit in the dream who was a prostitute, and she was weak. She was weak in her power, and uh, she was dishonoring the man of God. And I said, honor your father. That's what I said. In the, I looked to that evil spirit, fornication spirit, and I said, honor your father. That's what I said. Um, so uh, that is good. Learn from him. He has a whole lot of goodies in those books on the gift of discerning of spirits. But it's primarily a vision gift. Um, and uh, are there... There is a liberalness with this. Uh, we're talking about a visionary gift. We're not talking about sound doctrine. Now, there's a tension there. Why would visionary gifts contradict sound doctrine? They're not necessarily going to contradict sound doctrine, but visionary gifts can kind of get weird. And that's okay, because it's the gift of discerning of spirits, 1 Corinthians 12.10. So deal with it, right? Now, as long as the gift of discerning of spirits is giving you visions and dreams that are um, exposing sins, um, sins akin to the Ten Commandments. You're on the right track. But if you start having, quote-unquote, discerning of spirits dreams, right, where a sin is being mentioned that's not supported by the Ten Commandments, you've got a problem. Like, for example, the sin of eating a certain type of food. Well, well, well that's not the gift of discerning of spirits because Jesus declared all foods clean. Okay. So we've got to, under, we've got to read our Bibles, Read our Bibles, because we can think that we're operating in the gift of discerning of spirits in one dream, 
And then we'll go into another dream. We're not because it's contradicting the Bible. So we got to make sure that we know our Bibles. And we also need to understand, um, I would have to say, read some Wesleyan theology, Harold Lindstrom's Wesleyan Sanctification. Understand the basics of justification and sanctification from a Reformation point of view that's also open to the gifts of the Spirit. Um, you know, uh, so we need, to, we need to have sound doctrine that allows for the gifts of the Spirit. And Wesleyanism is that. And uh, you can, if you want to do a sh- something shorter than Harold Lindstrom, you can get uh, Wesley on Salvation by Kenneth J. Collins. But we need to have a grid that is sound doctrine while at the same time open to the, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the gift of discerning the spirits can get weird. Here's a case in point. Uh, my daughter for several years has been having problems with insomnia. Now, I don't want to hex it, but it's been so far so good. And she's been so far so good for about seven days. But uh, she has had horrible insomnia, waking up at 2 and 3 in the morning for, for almost two years now. And it's been really, really bad. Okay, And I was I fell asleep in the... the uh, the den, as I often do, me and my wife, we also oftentimes fall asleep in the den as we go to sleep watching a TCM movie. And uh, um, and our daughter came in to the den, as was her usual habit, around 2 o'clock or something like that in the morning. And as she came in, said, I can't sleep. As she came in, I I was groggy and a vivid flash of baphomet came into my eyes which is the which is the um which is the icon of the the satanic cults where they have the goat-headed demon with the upside down pentagram vivid i mean it just flashed into my i mean it was like if i'm talking about in terms of lucidity uh it was probably like 70 percent lucid you know um it was it it was it took me back, and this, so this happened right when uh, she says she says I can't sleep, and then all of a sudden Baphomet just flashes into my mind, and I automatically knew in my spirit that an evil spirit was there was a spirit of insomnia afflicting my daughter, so I said come over here sweetie, and I and I uh, I put my hand on her forehead. And I said, spirit of insomnia, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. And then I said to her, do you feel a little bit better? And she said, do you, did you feel anything? And she, she said, yeah, yeah, I did feel, I do feel a little bit better. And I was like, well, that's great. I want you to go back to sleep, sweetie. And she went to sleep for nine hours straight after that. And it's been this way for for um, seven days so far. So she has not had any problems with insomnia since that moment. And I'm hoping it'll continue, man, because uh, because that can cause some serious health problems if, if a little kid doesn't have good sleep like that. So um, I, I believe I had a discerning of spirits experience there, a spirit of insomnia afflicting my daughter. And... Uh, and I believe that I cast it out in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit because I had that that vision come at that very time. Um, so um, that was a vivid, closed vision. Eyes were shut, vivid, closed vision, and and then laying on of hands, rebuking the spirit of insomnia, etc. Now the expression "the spirit of insomnia" does not exist in the Bible. Spirit of infirmity does exist in the Bible. And this allows for a liberalization of the spirit of infirmity to be a spirit of, insert sickness name, insert sickness name, spirit of, insert whatever sickness name you want, right? So spirit of infirmity can become a heading in which there are thousands of different kinds of spirits of infirmity underneath it. And that's when the diagnostician of the Holy Spirit comes to give a Holy Spirit diagnosis 
through a visionary discerning of spirits. So I would have to say most of the time it's for healing, healing issues uh, through the laying on of hands under the, under the broad classification of spirit of infirmity. But in this case, spirit of insomnia, which is, uh, again, is, is a form of infirmity, right, um, had to be revealed by vision. So it, can I create a doctrine on the spirit of insomnia? No. But I can create a doctrine on the spirit of infirmity, right? But it seems that this gift of discerning of spirits liberalizes the general guidelines that are found in Scripture about evil spirits. And I can go that far. But when we talk about Jezebel as an evil spirit, or Leviathan is an evil spirit. I don't know. I don't know. It says in First John that there's a spirit of Antichrist. Or is that Second John or Third John? I can't remember. But I mean, I would just say, I mean, look, if you have a dream or a vision, okay. If you if the, if you're saying that there's a specific evil spirit and you saw it in a dream or vision, okay. And Ira Milligan's understanding of the dreams you dream or the divinity code or something brings something out. But just be careful creating these deliverance doctrines about these demon names because sometimes I wonder if we're just getting a little too liberal with that stuff. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.